Mel, it's such a pleasure to have you with us today. Your vibrancy, your authenticity is just so raw and so admirable. You are an entrepreneur, a mother, and a wife. I don't know how you do it. We don't, well, we don't know how you do it all. Your mission to help women shift their beliefs and raise their consciousness is just absolutely beautiful. I'm Brooke and these lovely women with me are the members of the Link Project. We're going to just ask you the first question and what is something Mel that you truly value? Um, but firstly, I just wanna say thank you so much for having me um, guys on. I'm you know, so honored and blessed to be in this room, um, just having a conversation with you amazing ladies. And Brooke, when you were um, talking about me, I was like, who is she talking about me? Is, this, is she talking about me? I was like, who is she talking about? Um, so thank you so much. That was a beautiful introduction. Um, so to your question, if I remembered. Yeah, that, how do you uh, do it all? <laughs> how do I do it all? Um, I plan, I visualise, I dream, and I cry a lot. <laughs> that's, that's, I, that's my secret tip, just cry, let it out. No, and what is something that you truly value? What I truly value is connection. Um, and I've done a lot of work about around values and what are my values. And the biggest thing that keeps coming back in all different areas of my life is connection, whether it's connection with my kids, um, relationships, connection to myself, connection to the divine, connection to Mother Nature. Um, it's just, yeah, that is probably my highest value is connection it's beautiful love it yeah thank you mel uh, <clears throat> i know that you're um, you're working on this new project called elevate um yeah it's so exciting we just want to know all about it you know so um i guess our next question is what is the reason behind elevate yeah, so that's my new baby. I've got three kids and Elevate, I say, I say is my fourth little baby. <laughs> um, so I'm in like 39 weeks and about to pop it out next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how Elevate came along about was, um, you know, it was just I didn't plan for it. I knew probably about two years ago I, um, I decided not to go back to work after taking um, extended maternity leave with my third baby and I just had this passion for service and helping women and um, with all the adversities that I faced in my life and, and how I overcame it and how I tapped into who I truly was and undercovered and undercovered, undercover, is that the word, undercover? Anyway, got to know <laughs> myself. I'm so bad with words. <laughs> Um, and when I really got to know myself, I just went, you know, I can't, knowing what I know and gone through what I've gone through, I can't just sit by and go on my merry little way and not help other women. It just had this burning desire. So I set out just on the path of going, I don't know how this is going to come about. I don't know what it is, how I'm going to help women, but I know I just need to start. So I you know, I heard people talking about becoming a coach and I'm like, what the hell is a coach? I don't understand. I've never heard of a coach before. So I took some, um, I took a course and got an introduction. I got a feel. I'm like, oh, this sounds, you know, this is pretty good. I like that. Um, I started, then I went into, I found Jay Shetty and I'm going through the Jay Shetty certification program at the moment. Um, and I, I had such a deep sense of like, wow, this is powerful stuff and this is the path that I can take to really help facilitate change in women and, and provide that support that I really want. Um, and then in that time, or well, I'm still going through that, but in that time of um, all this great awakening and realisation, I realised that it's, it goes deeper in there. How can I really help women not only through coaching and getting them to realise and uncover the greatness within and they empower themselves, but I found myself starting to build a business and being surrounded by, surrounded by women in business and, um, you know, the struggles and how lonely it feels and seeing um, that they're not what I felt as well and seeing that sometimes they get stuck, you know, behind business there is behind the beautiful Instagram photos and how amazing and I'm crushing this and crushing that, you know, is, is, 
it's a very lonely place, um, a lot of limiting beliefs, a lot of fearfulness. And when I surrounded myself, because I went out there looking for like-minded women, and when I surrounded myself with these amazing women in business, I realised it's that connection again, having that connection and that support for us to thrive and bring our magic into the world is so needed and there is not many places out there. Um, So I started holding co-working spaces just in my home studio. I'm going like that because my garage is that way, my home studio. I kicked Hubby's, uh, all his tools out into the backyard, (laughs) made it all pretty and held women's circles and co-working spaces and, um, and then I just went, you know what, why not? Why not just go for it? I'm just going to get in touch with an agent. I don't know how. I'm going to get in touch with an agent. I'm going to have a look at some spaces. I don't know what I'm going to have in the space, but I know I want to do coaching from there. I know I want to bring business and women, women in business in there, um, and just went for it. And it kind of just aligned, it flowed. I didn't have a grand plan, which I love to plan, but I didn't. I just went with the flow. I got a space and I'm like, what am I going to do with the space? I brainstormed and then it's just kind of evolved into this beautiful thing. So now it's, you know, a space where it's a co-working space. It's got a studio there because I'm all about, you know, not only empowering women or getting them to find the empowerment within themselves, but also to um, break the lineage of the family cycle, you know, all that bad crap and the limiting beliefs. And that will only start by, you know, working now, our generation is working on ourselves and being raising conscious, connected children to then be able to change the future generations. So I thought, okay, how can I incorporate that into my space that I'm doing? Um, So then I decided to create a studio in there where it's all about supporting women, not only women in business, but any women that can come in. So I'm finding facilitators that will hold meditation, breath work, tapping, embodiment, movement, women's circles, yoga, all that kind of thing to support them to connect back into their body, connect back into themselves so then they can go home and be a, you know, more awakened, present mother to change the future generations and it all starts with us. So that is a very long answer to your very (laughs) short question of how Um, long that came about. We just love it, Mel. It's just so beautiful. Your whole, um, the whole vision, the beautiful thought behind it, all of that comes out and it's just so beautiful to see it flow. And, and so we're really glad that was a long answer, to be honest, because we know when that's the case, it's coming from the heart, right? Yeah. So um, just so inspired by you sharing where it all started for you, how it evolved and from being the structured person to then go with the flow. It's just so wonderful to hear about um and i must say i do identify so much with you in terms of the structure you know kind of things kind of thing. so so much to learn and um, just just wondering with how did you come up with the name element ah oh, oh it was it was a process it was <laughs> sitting down you know i was uh i wasn't breaking it now I was a very perfectionist person so I sat there and I'm trying to get the perfect name and and um I might still have the book that I wrote it in and I sat there and going oh, these these words just don't you know I was trying to think of empowerment and women and all this stuff um and then I had two words that um just came to me when I'm driving um it was believe and uh elevate um And I really resonated with both of them. And the story behind Believe was, um, so I'm going through this, I'm going through this um, process of, you know, getting the warehouse and all that kind of stuff. And the fee set in and go, oh, my God, how am I going to get the money to do this? You can't do this. Who are you to do this? And I saw my favourite car driving past me and it had so caught my attention and it had the word Believe on it. And I looked at it and I went, okay, I just need to surrender and I just need to believe and I need to just trust. So that's when um, that word went, okay, I've got to call it the believe. But then I thought that's not really going to resonate with people. It resonates with me and it means so much to me. But the, the, the word believe is probably not going to resonate um, for the centre. And then I don't know, I was listening to a podcast and someone said the word elevate and I just went, oh, my God. 
I love that. So I wrote it down on a notebook, believe, because I still wanted it. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to scrub it off yet. And then I wrote the word elevate. Um, and I went to my friend. I'm like, okay, you got to tell me the truth, even though I knew the answer, but, you know, you got to get my girlfriend to, to confirm it for me. Um, and I'm like, which, which, which word? And she's like, elevate. And I'm like, yes, I knew it, but I want to believe in there. So this, this, the hub is called Elevate, but the studio itself is called the Belief Studio. So how it came about you've incorporated both yes I did oh, very <laughs> much. you found a way anyway <laughs> that's what you do you as a woman you find a way to do find a way yeah um I love how you combine the business and uh coaching together and you've mentioned as well that in in that space you want to be coaching people as well right but one of the questions that I wanted to ask you was um when you started going through the journey um, through the school and, you know, personal development and going deep, what would you say was the biggest learning for you and how do you think it can influence your future as a businesswoman and a coach as well? That's a great question, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So the biggest thing is, you know, I, I did a lot of personal development prior to going to Jay Shetty. So when I went into the Jay Shetty um, coaching program, I thought, you know, I know this stuff, I've gone through the modules, I know this stuff. And, you know, they have a reflection part and then you start really going, wow. And I started reflecting from such a different, um, such, what's a word? I'm not great with words, but in it's such a deep way that I never had before. And it just went like my mind was blown. I really surrendered and went in and just dropped my ego and go, okay, even though you know this stuff, you don't know it on, on a deeper level. Does that make sense? So going through the program, yes, I, I've, come, like, I've come out such a different person. The way I react, I don't react anymore. I really respond. I take pauses. And the biggest thing that I've learned that I want to take forward in term in my coaching and support me as a businesswoman and anything in life is really truly now understanding that everyone has it inside of them that no one is broken and for a very long time I thought I was broken and realized that you know you're not broken you have everything inside of you and all people need sometimes when they can't see that when they're in the the deepest darkest of dark is space someone to hold that space for them and to hear them to really listen and feel safe um so i think going forward is really having the understanding that i'm not here to fix anyone that i'm not here to tell anyone what to do and and which was really hard because i come from a mentoring background where i'm always teaching people okay we should do this and you do that and you're going to get these results and this is what i've done but i've really learned now that that's not the case. Like coaching is so profound and I'm here to really ask thought provoking questions, just like you did, Christina, just a second ago and hold that space. So I'm here to listen, really listen and capture the, capture the essence of what people are saying. I used to, when people were talking to me before, I'm like, yes, it's great, but I was so like, my ego mind was like, oh, I just want to interrupt them and say something. Like I cared what they said. But to be honest, was I really giving a crap? Like, was I really caring what they were saying? Because I was so quick to tell them what to do. But now I just love sitting back and I love getting curious and I love understanding why they think, why they think and what's their limiting beliefs and what's holding them back and what's the gap. So that's what I'm really going to bring in my coaching is really holding that space and allowing that person to empower themselves to get them out and realise they're not broken. Mm -hmm. And going forward as a businesswoman in, you know, any collaborations I do or any projects I do is really anyone that I'm working with is really sit back and hear what they have to say and, you know, and hear the magic that they're going to contribute into the world and how we can connect and, and bring more magic and beauty into the world. So that's probably the biggest thing that I've taken from uh, going through Jay Shetty Coaching School. Thank you for that. I love it. Brooke, I'm going to pass it on to you. It's now. just so amazing to hear that you have 
come to this realization so deeply and profoundly that you are not broken and that you want to share this with other people that just allows that's what I said before when I said you're authentic and you're just got this that word connection definitely rings through because I know as a woman myself I feel so deeply connected to your mission and to everything that you're discussing here today out of curiosity what are some of your really big goals for your for Elevate so probably my biggest goal in Elevate for Elevate at the moment is just to really create a thriving space um, that women feel pulled to come to. It's, so it's not just another, like when I see it, I don't want it to be another just co-working space or another place where they come and do yoga. Like I really want to build a community. I really want to build connection. I really want to build like when you go in there before you even sit down at your desk or before you even go into a class that you feel that energy that you just walk in and feel so connected in, in, within yourself. Like I just really, the biggest goal is really to build that connection. And again, there's that connection, like just to bring the women together and just to like when women come together and when they're connected and when they just let their guards down, it is so powerful. So if I can get elevated to elevate to a place where it is thriving with a huge community of women, um, that that for me is is everything. It's just like I said, so beautiful, and that building that hub for a connection. Um, so many people need that right now. So, I mean, gratitude for that. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mel. Um, I guess I just want to ask, I know like um, Brooke, you know, during the introduction, she already said how um, you're a mother, you're an entrepreneur, you know, um, businesswoman, life coach and all that. So I'm just curious. I want to know, how do you balance it all? You know, how do you do that? I mean, something that you know I guess everybody struggles with that right and I know like from what you said earlier it sounds seems like you're pretty hands-on as well like you know you were telling us earlier how you were just painting you know your wall just before you um came here so I just want to know how do you balance it all yeah so um and this is probably going to be a long long answer again because there's so many different aspects to be able to answer such a simple question like balancing you know um and I talk so much so probably I'll just touch back <laughs> so it's, it's taken me a, a little while just to juggle like just to before even business came about and just juggling life with kids in the house um was just a real big challenge for me um so fast forward now and how what one little little things that I've done to be able to balance it all or seem like I've got my crap together um, is really I wake up early in the morning. Like I wake up between 4 and 4.30 in the morning um, and I have a morning ritual that is absolutely non-negotiable. I find that, and it all started from when I had um, my third baby. Uh, so all my kids are two just under two years apart. So I've had two toddlers and a baby. <laughs> I was getting no sleep. And the the first breast, uh, you know, time she got up to feed, I breastfed her, it was at four o'clock in the morning. So I'll get up. And even though I was exhausted, I put her down to sleep. And then I went for a walk because that was the only time in my whole week that I would get time to breathe for myself. You go to the toilet, the kid's on your lap. You go to the shower, the kid's on your arm. Like, it's just, like, you have no time. So that's when my... 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. wake up. So I used to wake up in the morning. I'm sorry, my dog's gone off. Um, <laughs> used to wake up early in the morning um, and just go for my walks. And I found that that, even though I was exhausted by having that 40 minutes to myself, I was able to, to handle things a little bit better without losing it. So I wake up 4, 4.30 in the morning. My ritual includes, and every day it's not, structured I don't do everything there's some days where I'm amazing and I do it all and other days where I do one or two things so my rituals include uh, going for really long walks in in nature uh, listening to something that feeds me spiritually um, I do breath work that's non-negotiable always doing my breath work and center 
I read my standards that I've got in the mirror. So I remember my standards and how I want to show up in the world. I've got a mission statement. I call it an aligned statement. So I'm reading, um, you know, where my goals are, how I want to show up and how I'm living my life. So that reminds me, you know, the bigger picture in life. Um, I have my tonics, a mixture of tonics and celery juice, and I do my tongue scraping. So, you know, remove all the toxins and stuff like that. Um, so they are, and uh, a workout. So whether it's a, you know, a five-minute workout, a 20-minute workout, um, just something to move my body and pump. So that is a non-negotiable. And after I do my morning routine, I make the lunches and I always put a load of laundry on because laundry used to pile up and I have like four or five loads and I feel overwhelmed and I cry and I scream at the kids and lose my shit. But then I found... Hmm. Mel, if you're just putting one load of laundry on and hang it up before the kids wake up and the lunches are made, by the time the kids wake up, I feel good. I feel like I've achieved something and I'm ready to be present. I'm not scrambling, getting the kids out the door. They've forgotten shoes. Yes, they have like two times. I'm um, rocked up to school with their shoes on. Like I'm like, have you got your shoes on your bag? Let's go. You know, and I don't feel that I'm in that uh, crazy mum stage and rushing out the door. So that there sets me up already my day is really good and then of a night time in the afternoon I or during the week I write down my meals so I know what I'm cooking I've got all the ingredients there so as I'm cooking I pick up the clothes at night time I fold the clothes so it's done and I find just that allows me to be able to balance everything out so I'm present mum, I'm feeding myself, my housework is on, oh, and I vacuum like twice a day. Yeah. But it's only the handheld vacuum, little, you know, around. Because if my if I'm walking on crap on the floor, like crumbs on my feet, I freak out and I'll lose it and I won't even be in balance and I won't be able to paint balls or do anything. Like so when I'm showing up for myself, I'm showing up for my mum as a mum, I am um, doing the housework stuff then I'm able to balance. And every Sunday I write down what I have planned for the week, um, my big goals, um, and then I just break it down every day. Like what is the big goal for the week? What do I need to do each week? And I allow myself to be flexible. Like so today I wrote down I need to finish my presentation um, for my exam for JC. And I didn't get there because I just started to feel the heaviness of this week. I really started to feel it. So I allowed myself like, okay, I'm putting this down. I'm going to go and just breathe. I'm going to go and do painting that will zone me out and that's okay. Like, and have that flexibility and have that compassion with myself. Whereas before I didn't, I was like, no, if my list says this, this is what I need to do. And if I don't do it, I'm a failure and it's just shit. So now I have a lot of compassion for myself and flexibility. And I cry sometimes. When I feel like overwhelmed, I cry and that's okay. I just cry. And then I pick myself back up and off I go again. Wow. I was just going, that is in itself so much. You know, a lot. <laughs> I see why you call yourself a structured woman. I need to learn. Like, seriously. You need to train me. Because <laughs> I'm like going, like especially the waking up early, but I'm, I'm still fine. But yeah, thank you so much. That's beautiful. Thank you. So over to you, Redula. Yeah, um, I couldn't agree more, Mel. This was just so beautiful. And the way you broke it down um, and, and, you know, like showing up for yourself as a mom, showing up for yourself in the different roles. It's so important, like... Uh, to distinguish because we play so many roles mm -hmm. and it's so beautiful how you've done that really love it so what's the one piece of advice do you think from I know you've given a lot and I'm wondering uh, for a person who's looking to get on the same journey as you are on what is the one piece of advice that you would give them on that journey I'm sorry in terms of journey of personal growth or journey of into business um into business into business Okay, I think the journey into business, um, probably the biggest advice that I can do is have that vision, just the big vision. Don't get bogged down in the details. Just have the big vision of what you want. Trust in that. Let that go. Surrender into it's going to happen. And just focus on what is the one thing that I can do today that will get me closer to whatever that is. 
So for example, if I'm talking about Elevate, to put this into context, okay, Elevate, I had this big goal two years ago that I wanted to help um, empower and support women. I didn't know what that looked like, but that was my big goal. That's where I wanted to be. And I knew it was in business and I didn't know how. And then I took that one small step of going, let me research what industries is there. What does that look like? And found it was coaching. Then I took that next step in, that one little step in, reaching out to someone who's a coach and having a conversation, what is coaching? Then the next step was enrolling. So just know what you want. It doesn't need to be detailed. And just take what is the one little small step and give it time. It doesn't have to happen next month, next week, at the end of the year. It took me two years. And I didn't even know Ele Elevate wasn't even in there until six months ago. Mm -hmm. So just, yeah, big vision, let go, surrender, and take a small step. Beautiful. Yeah, no, I love that. Just the way you said it. Yeah, have the big goal, surrender. I think so important, Let's, the surrender piece, because we tend to sometimes get so close to it that then you just jeopardize the whole bigger goal, right? Yeah. Mm, love it. Mel, I know we asked you all about your business and your new projects and all of that, but um, since, of course, we know each other like a little bit, um, <laughs> like tiny bits, a little bit. bits but... Um, I honestly just wanted to ask you probably more of, of like a personal question. It's uh, also going to be like a bit of a philosophical one as well. <laughs> but no, it's just because I love that you are so connected to who you are. You know what you are. You know what you want. You're being unapologetically yourself. You talk the way you talk and you do not care. And this is something that I admire about you. Like it really inspires me personally. So thank you. Um, but if you were to give someone life advice, not business advice, but life advice, <laughs> which one would it be? Uh, life advice. I would say that life isn't as serious as you make it out to be. That life is just so simple life is breath and when I find that I'm getting my head caught up in bullshit issues people's drama people's perception of me society's perception or even my own perception of where I need to be and what I need to be doing I really just take it back to breath like I just stop and go out in nature if I'm not out in nature I just look out into the trees and I just breathe and connect back in and realize that is life is just breath right here right now and all that other shit all that bullshit all social media or you know big house and materialistic things and the way you look and, and relationships and all that bullshit does not matter it just matters in this moment right here right now and that is probably the biggest, um, biggest profound thing that I live my life to. You just like say it how it is. You always get straight to the point and I just love it so much. Like you just let go of all the crap and literally in your life, this is what you've done to be you. And I think this is such um, an empowering thing, empowering thing for other women and people in general to actually do. Um, so I just want to congratulate you on your soon opening space that you worked really hard for. Thank you. Um, and I think you should be really, really proud of yourself. We are proud of you, that's for sure. Oh, thank absolutely, you. Absolutely. I was about to say the same thing. We're so proud of you. It's such a journey that you've been on and go you for the tongue scraper like seriously I do that every yes. morning too and that morning ritual I'm like oh, I do that too and somebody else puts I the laundry that. on in the I morning oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give it to me sister because that's yeah. totally what I do as well so and like we all do so thank you so much for uh, yeah keeping with that ritual and that breath that connection that you have to those trees and that life and that stillness and just that word that you keep using, that word surrender and that word connection, it just comes through so authentically, beautifully. I just 
Yeah, and so much gratitude again. My next question is actually how maybe you connect with your family and what are some things that you enjoy doing together when you give yourself break time? Oh, okay. Um, connection with my family. So it's really like, I think that's the one of the highest things we value as well as a family, like um, my partner and I, Shane, is really being present family, uh, present parents. Um, and supporting our kids, like knowing that we're there and that they feel safe and that they, you know, because we're, we're busy, you know, life is busy and Shane has got, we've got a family business that he's running and he can be working seven days a week and I've, you know, got the studies and I've got um, Elevate opening. So we ensure that we try every Friday night. I'm like, why am I crossing my fingers? I don't know. But every Friday night, we do like family movie night. So whether sometimes we don't get to watch a movie because we're up chatting, um, but just spending that quality time with them. Um, and if the footy's on, Shane's not in family movie night. He's out on the lounge watching the footy, but I make sure that I'm there. Um, and we try every Sunday to have family day, even if it's just going to the park and sitting there for half an hour and getting Macca's ice cream or, you know, taking a whole day picnic and, you know, doing something fun like on the Gold Coast has got amazing beaches and, and um, walking paths and stuff like that. So whether it's something so big or something so small, I just make sure that I'm doing something with them all the time. And I really ensure for me that it's so important to keep that open communication like my daughter is turning 10 at the moment and anyone knows or remembers being going into that teenage years that your kids just don't want to talk to you they hold everything um so I've been working really hard to keep that open communication with my daughter to really hearing her and it goes back to your question Christina um, about you know what did I take away from coaching and it's really just sitting and letting her hear and not correcting her or telling her don't feel like that don't worry but just actually letting her come out and hear her mm -hmm. and I find by doing that over the last year it's really made her open up and created such a strong connection where she may be going through something and I'll give her her space and when she's ready she's like mum can we have a chat I'm like, sure. And she just opens up about how she's feeling. And now, you know, that's rolling out into my son. He's like, mom, can we talk? I'm like, sure. And then Zara's like, can we talk? But she doesn't know what she's talking about. She just wants to have fun times. So we just have fun times. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and in all that seriousness, I am just a big goofball. I am so hyper. I'm probably a little bit ADHD, but I'm diagnosed. Like I get bursts of energy and I just need to like go crazy and my kids love it. So I'm like, yes, I've got kids. So I don't look like a, a psycho. Like, I'm, no, I'm just playing with my kids, guys. It's not me. I'm just playing with my kids. So, you know, I'll put music on and, and we dance and I always put my bum in their face. I'm like, bum in your face. And they do it to me. And, you know, we're just tackling each other and they're always tackling Shane. And um, so, yeah, we really bring that play. We really bring that connection. And, like I said, whether it's a whole day, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, I'm always making sure that through the week we have that that time, no matter what's going on. Yeah. Well, it's so beautiful to hear that on Friday night, and I don't blame your husband, in, in my family it's football as well, but it's yeah. me. So <laughs> I normally tune out. AFL, though, a bit different to rugby, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and that on Sundays you get to have that connecting time, but they're just so blessed to have you as their mother and to have such a role model, not only a person that's strong within business, but also within their own life. So I'm sure they're going to be so grateful and that connection with your daughter, that's going to be just, I'm so curious to see how she turns out as a teenager because with a mum like you, she's very blessed. I should probably still have all the sass though. Well, you've got that, don't you? Isn't that what you mix it up? I was going to say, you've got that too. Do I? I was going to say, she'd get that from, from her mom. Got it from my mama. Got it. Yeah. I got the sass, baby. From my mom. I love it. Oh, dear. But yeah, that's so beautiful. I was like, um, I could just... So much to learn there, you know, because my son's, um, he's seven turning eight, you know, I mean, I'm already, I don't know, like, I'm not saying he's not their teenager yet, but you know how he's already acting like adult and all that. I'm like, shit, man, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to, you know, 
respond to when he starts acting like teenager like i'm so scared i don't want to get there you know like literally that scares me but that's so true like how you said mel just um yeah just I've, i'm learning that i'm doing that i'm applying myself as well is not to tell him what to do or not to give him advice but just be there and listen to him and just really because i think now all of us are life coaches here and we have sort of now apply the life coaching on our own family as well right like how instead of giving advice we ask questions and I think that really helps you know in the family as well and I can see the changes especially with me and with my kids as well you know my especially at least with my with my son and yeah my husband as well <laughs> but yeah that's so that's so beautiful but yeah thank you so much for sharing I guess um my next question is um I know we've talked about Elevate and I know you you said you you got the opening on Sunday. Yep. So how do you feel? So how are you feeling about your grand opening of Elevate on Sunday? It's so exciting. I am so excited. But you know, I, I was having this conversation uh, with Shane the other night and just went, you know, I thought I would be so excited you know when something like you're so looking forward to is finally here um but i'm not feeling that excitement i'm feeling very neutral um i'm i'm feeling to be honest when people are like oh you're amazing congratulations you should be so happy you should be so proud i'm not able to receive that because i'm going this isn't i honestly feel that this isn't my creation like i just really truly going I'm just hearing what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm just taking the small steps that we spoke about and the divine whatever you want to call it God universe angels is just stepping in and creating situations like there I've got my logistics team the divine is my logistics team and I'm just like the coffee boy that's going out and taking the steps so I I honestly feel that it's just coming through me and uh he he responded in a something really he goes you are like you should be great not grateful that you should be happy and you should be proud of yourself because you have gone and put all the hours in and you've gone and you've dreamt it and you've gone and done this work and he goes i see you as like uh, noah's ark you know noah was just getting told this is what you need to do you need to build this ship and you don't know, he doesn't know why, he doesn't know how he's going to achieve it. And all this help is just coming. And then when this big ship is here, he then realizes, and the storm comes and the flood, he then realized what he's created and why he's created it. And that's exactly how I felt. Like I, I had this vision of wanting to help and I didn't know what it looked like. And I'm just getting all these, these sound like a crazy person these thoughts these feelings these drop-ins um of going this is what you need to do and i've just taken that action i don't know why i don't know how i'm going to do it i don't know you know any of that the logistic team is looking after that and i've just taken the steps so that's how i'm feeling i'm feeling very in all like i stand in my space and i look around and i'm just going how like how is this here how has this been created like like i look at it and even though i've got all the pieces and all the furniture has been sitting in my garage for months and i put it there i'm like I, I didn't do this like how is this there so in terms of how i'm feeling i'm just feeling in awe of of just life of just how simple small steps can be created into this big thing so i'm just in very like neutral mode at the moment I'm, i think i'm in shock <laughs> maybe i'm in shock <laughs> possibly i was gonna say maybe you you are because i think you've come all this long right i think um you've done it you've done it you know it's all the hard work that you've been putting in um on this project you know elevate it's actually coming it's becoming real so possibly you're in that or you you're just shocked so i can completely understand and i'm so yeah we are so proud of you like we said very very proud of you and and um yeah all the best we just want to wish you all the best you know and all the i don't know i just 
I'm just so excited to know how you, that's, you know, just knowing that how you're going to be empowering all those women out there, you know, through this elevator, it's, it's amazing. It's literally amazing. You know, not everybody thinks that, and the, just the vision and the goals that you have um, for elevate, it's really, um, I don't know, it's very um, empowering. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, all the best, you know, so Thank very you. exciting. Thank so, you. Um, I don't know. So, Mirdilang, over to you. Yes, yeah. Mel, I just loved how you shared um, your whole process and, and the journey from hearing, you know, hearing it from the divine, as you called it at that point, and essentially just uh, surrendering because you surrendered, you followed that, you didn't question it too much because the moment you question it, it would, who knows, right? Yeah. And it went with that. That's just so beautiful that you put that amount of trust in that, you know, the, the voices that came to you and you believed in that and you went ahead with that. You know, I, I, I just found that just so powerful and, and, and maybe also explains a little bit about the reason you're not like to some extent yes shock and whether to some extent it's like I am delivering what's been told to me and and this is the start of that journey like because I know the bigger picture is to see these women you know empowered and and coming into the spaces and um and I'm just like I have so much gratitude for you for showing up for yourself and doing the work because you know there's a far like a there's such a disconnect from, you know, getting the message to doing the work and, and also trusting the process. Like that's huge. It's really huge. So yeah. A um, lot of gratitude and thanks. And just for sharing so wonderfully openly with <laughs> us, so we could learn from all of this. And honestly, I think with each and every sentence, we're like, ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, oh, wow, this is something. And I'm wondering, how are the kids feeling right now? Um, have they uh, been around? I mean, I have seen a few pictures of them being around the Elevate, you doing things with them. How are they feeling? They are so excited um, because Elevate is in between our house and their school. So, Every time I pick them up, are we going to get an elevator? Are we going to get an elevator? And I'm like, no, not today. Like, let's go. Probably because there's like the whole, I've got a fridge there and there's a whole freezer full of ice cream in there. That's probably why they want to go. <laughs> no, but um, I, I've included them in my whole process, um, especially my daughter, because I want to, I want them to see like, you know, you're having a dream and what it takes to actually get there, not just like, oh, she go, go sit down. Yeah, I tell them she go sit down and, and go watch TV. But I really allow them to, you know, the planning stage, what do you think about this? What do you think about these colours? Oh, and I'll show them, like, if I buy something on Marketplace, what do you think about this? Do you think it will fit really nice? And, you know, um, so I really, really um, allow them to be part of that process. Mm -hmm. um and they absolutely love it and yes they're there you know hubby's this you probably heard all that noise earlier sorry he was just in there trying to get some tools because he's out there um, um now doing stuff but they're there they're there helping us they're helping putting furniture together they're helping painting the floor so you know what you do see on instagram is my kids are there when i'm there they're there the late nights they're there you know a couple of hours in the day but they are so excited and my daughter she does dance and she's, I'm just trying to find, maybe I don't have it. She has this little fly that she's done up and she's like, mum, I'm booking your studio because I'm going to run dance classes for the little girls and I'm going to do ballet and this is the song I'm going to do. And she put the dates and she put what time and how old and what dance and she did a whole dance playlist and a routine. So um, it's really beautiful to see that from that it is inspiring her to follow what she loves and her dream and that she doesn't have that fear or limitation in herself like we do like I know I do and she's just goes out there and, and gets it done so um I'm very blessed that I'm able to expose that to my children really the whole family is is involved I love yeah. that I love that for you <laughs> um I think I'm going to ask you probably one of the last questions today yeah. but um just very curious um so obviously this is knowing you not going to be the last thing that you're going to do because you're just going to go and you know conquer everything you see on your way um but 
I know that you've done so much work on Elevate to get here, but what's next for you? Are there any more voices there that are saying, Mel, go out, to, out there, do something? <laughs> or maybe like a personal goal. What is something that you want to do next? Okay, so in saying that, I've told the voices to just take a break. <laughs> so I'm working on something at the moment. I'm studying. <laughs> no. So um, I'm doing an Ayurvedic uh, course at the moment to be an Ayurvedic uh, lifestyle and practitioner, not practitioner, a wellness and lifestyle coach. Um, so for me, it's not only just empowering women and connecting back into themselves. It's really, you know, honoring the body that we call a vessel that we live that houses us. Um, and I'm, I'm so for everything, you know, natural and supportive and just, yeah, giving, nourishing ourselves. So I did an Ayurvedic cleanse last year um, with this beautiful lady, Harmony, and it was such a profound thing. I thought Ayurvedic was, oh, you know, I've got some chronic health issues. I'm just going to go there and, you know, um, heal myself. But I came back and just realised it is so much more. It's not just a, a nutritional thing. It is a way of life. And realised when I delved deeper into it, a lot of the Ayurvedic ways of lifestyle of, of how to, you know, um, live so to speak is what I was already doing you know going with the rhythm of the cycles eating at certain times um you know all that kind of stuff I was already doing and went oh my god this resonates with me so much that I need to learn more I need to learn this ancient wisdom I need to um, deepen my rituals and my practices and my way of thinking um so yeah I'm I'm going through that and it's a six month uh six month uh program so i'm i think oh maybe two months in now and absolutely loving it so next year when i graduate i definitely want to incorporate uh that into uh you know what i'm doing so i'll be a coach um i'll be you know a vedic lifestyle coach because i think that will really come hand to hand if someone's on that journey of really transformation and transforming themselves then i'll do the coaching side of that and then outside of the coaching if they want more of the ayurvedic and understanding and learning that to support their new life um, then i'll definitely have programs set up i don't know how that's going to look like but um i'll have programs set up to be able to support them in that as well I knew that there was something going on. You see, that's why I asked. <laughs> Knowing you, that was not the only thing you were working on. I remember when, I remember, you. yeah, I remember hearing it before. I think it's so beautiful how you see, like that metaphor that you used before about Noah's Ark and how you just kept bringing that word surrender. And I think Rodella stole it. For, like I was going to say exactly the same thing that you said, because I just think that maybe that or is just that, you're just so surrendered with that universe, with that, um, you know, with whether it be God, um, whether it be um, Krishna, whoever you, you know, that divine, you were just so connected and so surrendered that this process and this eight is just, yeah, I can't, words can't even say it because I can feel it. I have like this feeling coming mm -hmm. over me. And the fact that you've really today, in today's interview, shown us connection over correction and just that small step, that really active listening to that divine is just so eye-opening for me because I hear voices in my head and I Yay. go, oh, no one else is going to hear that. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I'm like, hang on a second. I'll be teaching my class. And I'm like, well, there's that voice again. And I'm like, look, I'm always, but I'm not, I don't have that male way of dealing with it. I'm like, mm, no, I'll tune you out. I'll walk away from you. I'll do something different. Only now am I really learning to surrender to it. So hearing how you've done that and what you've achieved in such a, like a short amount of time, um, we'll be all thinking of you on Sunday. And I'm sure your children's smiles are going to light up that opening so very brightly that you're it's going to hit you that you have done this with the divine so keep going with your mission and keep oh, just everything everything about you just from my head to my feet just resonates so thank you so much for coming and joining all of us today we are extremely yeah. humble and we'll do this Yay! <laughs> and then I think and then 